George again here, and a friend Randy. of mine, Randy. Uh, this is episode three. Um, we've been busy. I thought I'd put a face to Randy because he actually has been with us right from the start, from when the container arrived from Malta. He was there to help unpack it. He, um, he has been right through with us. He has come to uh, help extract the uh, center spar and then also load it into his pickup truck and bring it over here as well as you know a lot of tedious labor that was involved in setting up and start up on this project. So what's been going on George? Well as you can see if you take a look all the bolts now have been removed from the spar cap. There are some pretty damn long bolts in here because they go all the way through. If you took, take a look at the bottom, you'll see them protruding out. I still have to drive them all the way out, the ones that would move. I still have to get a larger hammer because some of them just don't really want to move. Also on the uh, girder webbing section, the rivets have been moved, removed every other hole so it doesn't fall apart but all that has been accomplished. Now the next step and we will do this this week unfortunately Jim won't be here but um, I'm going to take uh, my camera it won't be as professional as his work but we're going to record I've got volunteers coming over to help flip this piece of spar. Now it weighs anywhere between 800 and 1000 pounds Randy and I know this because we brought it back in his truck and we unloaded it by the two of the two of us by ourselves. So what actually we're going to do is we're going to lift it, drop it down on this side, rotate it, and put it back on the other side and re-block it. The reason being is there are some bolts, there are four here, for instance, and there are some more on the other side. They are the heads, not the nuts. And to grind off the head in this area is just way too labor intensive and then to even try and drive it out. So that's the reason why we have to flip it to get the nuts off and uh, anyways, drive those out and then we can extract the spar caps. And then we can actually start taking this apart. From this point, there will be a table erected in the garage to take these parts apart, catalog, photograph, and start to restore them to build the new center wing section. <coughs> How long does it take you to do do uh, like a section? It, it, people don't understand. Uh how long it takes the, 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 because I'm, I only come around here and, and do this once a week to show what's what's going on how long does it take to actually do something uh, that's that's uh, like giving give me an example let people know what an example would be well you know this represents the amount of work that has been done since the last episode um, there are there is a lot of corrosion and uh, it being because you have steel bolts going through aluminum and we have an electrolytic action which is mostly a micro battery with two dissimilar metals which corrode the metals together and actually physically weld them together. That's one of the challenges we're facing but at least and this represents if you take a look in here this represents about three days worth of drilling, grinding on these bolts and everything. But one of the fortunate things is, here's one of the bolts that was taken out. You'll see this white sort of yellowy residue film on this. What they actually did back in the, uh, pardon me, back in the uh, late 40s, early 50s and 60s, when they constructed an aircraft, they used what is called a zinc chromate paste that they would brush onto the shank and then insert the bolt into the hole and that would isolate. The, it, it, it was like a, 
an, in, an inert substance to isolate the two different materials to stop the electro, electrolytic action and corrosion. So, you know, it is what it is, but, uh, you know, there is a lot of things that they did which are very fortunate for myself to uh, take it apart. So what do you think about what's going on here? Oh, this is great. Uh, my understanding of everything is, is very, very limited, but my appreciation of it uh, is in direct uh, proportion. Uh, and it's, it's great fun just to, to take part in any way that I can. Uh, I'm just a golfer and have been and uh, hope to continue to be a, a golfer taking part anyway. It's, it is a learning experience just being around this type of thing and seeing the complexity. That's one of the things that just amazes me is that like nowadays we seem to think, oh, everything is so compound complex. Well, yeah, but guess what? Back in the 30s and the 40s, it was also the same way. And, and my understanding of the whole aircraft is that it was the first one that was actually built in components, componentry. Yes. So looking at this and thinking, you know, like they had a map of every single bolt and every single thing in the whole aircraft. And when you think of that, that's, that's pretty uh, amazing. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just great to, to be around to take part, especially in something that's so close to our history the history that we have, the sacrifices that were made, and the creativity, uh, you know, especially, okay, on the Allied side, but also on the German side and the other side, there is great uh, creativity. So uh, it's, it's just uh, a privilege to, uh, to take part in this. I might also add that uh, Randy's father served in the RCAF, and uh, unfortunately he's just deceased last year. And uh, anyways, uh, he would have enjoyed seeing this, but uh, Randy actually kind of considers doing part of this uh, for his dad. That's good. That's good. So tell me more about uh, how, how, heavy, how heavy do you think this piece actually is? Like I said, we didn't weigh it, but it's anywhere between 800 to 1,000 pounds. As you can see by the... Uh, size of the structure here where it was cut how actually big it is this is approximately an inch and this is three quarters of an inch it's uh, quite heavy and these uh, structural members here are quite heavy they're up to a quarter of an inch thick or more but then that's because it has to be extremely strong like exactly we discussed last exactly week. like i was going to say in the last episode this was never designed to be taken apart and repaired. If this had to be repaired, the airplane was gone. There was, you know, it was a write-off. So this is, this is also one of the things that we're uh, dealing with because it was not designed to be repaired. So we have to treat it in a different way. Instead of just removing bolts and rivets and everything, we have to, you know, redesign everything. But uh, it's, it's going really good. So George, I understand you've been getting some comments from some of the people off of uh, your YouTube site for the show. Uh, what are some of the people saying and what, did, what do you want to say about it? Well, you know, I, I, I welcome these comments and I wish people would do it because through the show I can uh, at least answer, you know, make, you know, reply to the comment or if there's a question that uh, you would like to ask and I, like I said I can reply to you through the show just leave me your call sign there was a gentleman I presume from England that made a reference about trying to do this in England uh, the metal would have disappeared uh, we have the same problem here in Canada the only difference is I have several deterrents in place especially one hell of a good group of neighbors that really are appreciating what's going on here this street is quite rich in Air Force history. I'm not going to say their names, but there's at least six people that are retired from the Air Force here. They really like what's going on and they respect what we're doing. Anyways, just keep bringing in the comments. And like I said, I will, I will, I will welcome them and answer whatever I can in the time that I've, I'm allowed. And if I may introduce Demon, he is Chris's and my dog, our first dog. He's, uh, he's a 130-pound Alaskan Malamute. 
he's quite uh, intimidating looking and he's uh, he's a big dog and uh, he's not going to take anything. Now we've sort of dubbed 57 Rescue that uh, he's sort of the mascot of the project. A, he's a special dog being that he was actually born on November the 11th, 2005. The second reason is when the breeder brought him home to us, he was a New Year's baby. He was delivered on January the 1st. Chris Mercier at Merga Industries. We really appreciate what he's doing for us. And like I said, all these tools are top quality. Uh, the same thing with the drills, very expensive, very high tech. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate the fact that um, he is sending us such good material. And again, we'd just like to thank him.